In this video, I'm going to reveal a hidden truth about shadow work that you need to know to really integrate your personal power and take your shadow work to a higher and also deeper level. Because integrating your shadow is really one of the most profound spiritual practices, personal growth practices that you can do. You're literally shining a light on the darkness within and also uh, in the world. And then you are more integrated and more whole and more complete and not acting out from a negative, uh, yeah, destructive behaviors that are shadow based. So I'll also uh, give a lot of examples in this specific video, also share some personal stories, and then it becomes really clear what this hidden truth is that I'm talking about. So what I am talking about is a very important aspect of shadow work. And that aspect is called projection or understanding like really what projection is and why projection happens from a shadow perspective. Because if you look at the shadow, these are disowned parts of the self. These are parts we don't want to identify with. So what then happens is it's not that these parts are gone. They're still somewhere in the unconscious or subconscious mind. And then what tends to happen is that these parts, they are seen in the outside world. They are seen in the outside world. They are seen in others because you try to hide them from yourself. And this is, in a sense, also uh, yeah, a very good way to understand, okay, where are really your shadows? Uh, how are you projecting on other, onto other people? So let me just uh, give a couple of examples to really uh, yeah, make this concept very clear to you. So let's say uh, there's a guy or a group of guys and they really try to improve with uh, meeting girls, for example. And they uh, study some courses online and read books. But then uh, maybe there's some other friends of this uh, specific group or something that really uh, yeah, look down on that behavior. It's like, oh, okay, why are you doing that? Uh, learning how to improve with girls and all these things, you know? Like, oh, it's so stupid. And like, uh, hey, just uh, uh, yeah, don't do that. That's, uh, that's stupid. Why would you like do personal growth around that? But often it really comes from that they are themselves afraid to meet girls. <laughs> You know, they're afraid to approach, they're afraid to put themselves out there. And then it's easier to judge the other people uh, than to actually do the work themselves. That's a classic example. Another uh, example could be uh, bullying. And uh, yeah, like the bully bullies other kids based on maybe certain characteristics. But um, yeah, often the bully got bullied themselves earlier or is really afraid oh, that they are going to get bullied. So they bully the other person. So yeah, it's like this mechanism again of like, oh, I don't want this. This part of myself is not, not good. So uh, I better uh, bully other people. You also see it a lot in uh, empath narcissist dynamics. And yeah, sometimes there is really a real narcissist that does bad things to the empath. But often it's also just that the empath is actually projecting also certain narcissistic uh, tendencies that they themselves have on the other person. And that yeah, also happens. You know, it's really always the other one that is the bad one <laughs> uh, when the breakup happens or something like that. You know, it's like, that's like projection. That's like, oh, can you also look at yourself? And that's really, really crucial to understand. And then, uh, yeah, maybe another example is the uh, conflict between um, Jewish people and Palestinian uh, or people from the Arab world. And it's always the other uh, party is the monster. The other party is the monsters. Oh, they are so bad. They are so evil. We need to destroy them. So, oh, okay, like you need to destroy them. So it's like, okay, so you're exactly the same then. <laughs> you are really saying that this other uh a group of people, they're so evil and yeah, we have to destroy them with all our might and everything. So it's a bit like, yeah, okay. So are you then not exactly the same thing as you say that you despise? Because it is a shadow projection. You are not aware of doing that. You turn into the thing that you despise because you are denying that you are also the monster in that specific situation. 
And then, um, yeah, if you look at uh, maybe an org organization like the Antifa or something, they're against the fascists, and like, oh, they're so bad, the fascists, and uh, they're evil. Okay, so if you look at them, they're very fascist because they are projecting a certain shadow onto the other person. And when you're not aware of that you are projecting, it usually goes more to extremes because in unconsciousness, uh, in you know, just energy terms and consciousness terms, if a part is unconscious, yeah, it, it, it tends to go more to the extremes. If both sides are seen, then you have a more holistic <laughs> uh, view. And then, yeah, it becomes more depolarized. It becomes more centered and more, yeah, not so extreme. <laughs> yeah, and that's a really important thing to understand. So those are just a couple of examples. And uh, yeah, really uh, yeah, important to understand that this happens a lot. And let me share also uh, yeah, an important distinction to be made. It's not only that we project negative traits onto other people. It's also that we project positive traits that we have disowned in ourselves. Maybe certain talents or certain uh, yeah, traits or qualities that we think we miss and we project them out into others. It's like, oh, they have the, the beauty, the, the strength or uh, the confidence or all these things. Oh, they are such good leaders. If you look at, uh, oh, 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 no, uh, Trump or Hillary or wh whatever person you uh, view as the leader. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, maybe you don't believe in, uh, in those things at all. But uh, just to paint the picture, like, oh, oh, they are the leaders. Okay, what about your own leadership? capabilities <laughs> so this is also really important to understand that let me give a personal story around that also when i was uh, growing up yeah i always had this struggle with um yeah i think it started when i was about 17 or something 18 it's like okay uh, yeah i feel a bit skinny oh let's go to the gym oh let's go to the gym and get muscles and the process seemed very simple like okay you eat a lot and you work out <laughs> But for some reason, it just didn't work. It, it didn't work. It like, I just couldn't gain muscle. So I was what they would say a hard gainer, you could uh, call that. And then, uh, yeah, that went on for years until I was, uh, you know, uh, maybe 10 years later. Uh, and then, I don't know, I, there's a lot of uh, energy around this, you know, like, oh, like, why can't I do this? And uh, yeah, I was... Uh, training one time in the week and uh, doing some kind of high intensity training and uh, eating kind of like a uh, paleo style diet, doing intermittent fasting. And yeah, there was just certain things. And at one point I also just accepted it. I was like, okay, it doesn't really matter that much, but there was of course, like still a part of me that was like, ah, okay, I really want to do this, but I just can't or something like that. And just long story short, a lot of things happened at some point in my life. I went through a total transformation where I really, on a very, very deep level, accepted weakness. I accepted being skinny, and I started to really love that. I really like, went very deep into that, uh, let's say, polarity, into that energy. And what I really discovered is that uh, when you do that, when you go really deep into your own unconscious or shadows and these fears around it and not being good enough, and then it's like, okay, but I'm doing that. So that actually makes me very strong. <laughs> I am very strong. And I was always projecting, oh, these other people are strong or these other men are strong. They have big muscles. They're doing this. They're doing that. Uh, I can't gain these muscles. But the moment that I really gave myself permission to actually experience this quality that I obviously had and that I obviously have. <laughs> then after that, my whole reality started to change it. And then at some point it was just effortless. Okay, now it's just a normal part of my life. I go to the gym, it's cause and effect. I can gain muscle. It's no, it's no, no issue. I feel strong because I gave myself permission. But before that, I was always, I don't know, like projecting this outward and I felt weak. But when you go into weakness, well, that makes you strong. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, also uh, yeah, an interesting example. And then um, if you maybe uh, think of another example, maybe um, you see this with women a lot more. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, the, the idea of uh, being beautiful or ugly and yeah, that kind of like energy around that, that uh, yeah, they do a lot of makeup and all these things and, <laughs> you know, like, 
which is good. I mean, it's good as a girl to, you know, uh, want to look attractive. But uh, is it coming from a healthy place? Do you actually find in yourself that you're not enough uh, or that you really, really feel ugly and therefore not, uh, not lovable? And that can even happen to girls that are very, very beautiful. But um, yeah, then if you actually go into that, into that acceptance, into that yeah feeling of not being good enough not being loved and that the beauty uh, comes more from within because you give yourself permission <laughs> to feel beautiful because that is a quality that you have and then natural beauty arises and then often girls actually look much prettier they maybe dress better or they just have a different energy a uh, different <laughs> yeah energy and that leads to actually looking better <laughs> and that's a very interesting interesting phenomena also that uh, yeah when you integrate these things then it's actually also something that has an effect also on the physical body and on the outside world because yeah you give yourself permission to feel that feeling and uh, maybe before that uh, just to give the example it's maybe oh it's always the other girls that are very pretty it's always the other girls that are very beautiful and uh, that look good or something like that so that is just uh, another example it, it shows up in uh, yeah uh, unlimited ways of course but uh, yeah, really that projection, look, oh, they have the good qualities. I don't have those. Because the secret is to really understand that from a consciousness perspective uh, and also just from a human perspective, and you can uh, yeah, like investigate this for yourself. You have all the traits that you despise in other people. And you also have all the traits that you really admire in other people. Because what happens is that, yeah, we say like, oh, I don't like this about the other person. But okay, where do you do this yourself? Where are you sometimes narcissistic? <laughs> where are you sometimes uh, a little bit sneaky? Have you, uh, yeah, you're like, oh, they're so bad people. Oh, they lie or something. Uh, have you never told a lie? <laughs> never told a, a little white lie even? It's probably not even possible. <laughs> You know, so yeah, if you go more towards truth, then you will be more liberated because uh, you're not uh, yeah, saying like, oh, those are like the evil monsters. <laughs> or uh, yeah, if you really admire a certain uh, person in the world, like, oh, so they, they have such good qualities. Uh, they're such a good leader. They're so smart, uh, so uh, strong and beautiful, or all these things. And then you really put them on a pedestal. Then you already know that you are disowning this part of yourself and not finding it within. Because a balanced person would also look at that person that is maybe super successful and uh, beautiful or whatever, and then they could also see that they also have bad qualities and that they also have a bad life <laughs> and that it's not all good because nothing in this world is only good or only bad. And this is a really important part of this shadow integration to really understand that, that, uh, yeah, you often project what you disown and you often, uh, you know, uh, yeah, like what you dislike about yourself, you see in others. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that is really the essence of your power to really go into that and to really, uh, yeah, do some meditation on that. And I can share a couple exercises also, uh, that can really help to do this and uh, yeah uh, just to start there so a couple exercises that I could recommend first one is really maybe for the next week or two weeks as a starter exercise is just to become more aware of this so when you're talking to somebody uh, when you're triggered by something really investigate become more aware just shine that light of awareness onto that situation what is really going on? Are you projecting something onto the other person that you are doing yourself? Or are you really pl placing responsibility of your reactions to a situation onto the other person? Oh, they need to change. But yeah, okay, like you are the person in charge of your emotions and your perspectives on the situation. That is your responsibility. So can you see that? Are there maybe certain moments where you say certain bad things about people? Hmm, okay. Uh, do you maybe have these traits yourself? <laughs> uh, 
it, yeah, that takes an honest heart also to look at that in that way. And yeah, you can, can come to the conclusion that, yeah, maybe certain people uh, have it more uh, than you. Okay, that's fine. But there are often parts that yeah, also have this part because you have all the qualities. You can really investigate this because when you then see that you have the bad qualities and also the good qualities, then it also collapses more and then it's more neutral. And then it is actually authentic uh, confidence. Then it is authentic self-love, authentic peace. Yeah, because it becomes authentic. It's not so polarized. It's not only like looking at one side of the story. So yeah, just become aware of that. Look at that in your life for yourself, but also, uh, yeah, notice it in other people, maybe your friends or parents or something like that. Like, and it can sometimes be actually quite funny. Like some examples that I, that I told before, like, uh, yeah, that you notice it and it's like, oh, okay, that's like classic projection. That's very interesting that people do that. <laughs> yeah, just try to notice that. And then, uh, yeah, you can also do some, uh, a meditation on it yourself maybe there are certain parts you can become aware of and then uh, ask them why there's even a shadow really go into that be aware of your triggers and then uh, another thing that you can do is to journal about this so journal about yeah where you project or where you feel that uh, others may be projecting onto you so just yeah, like a lot of awareness exercises and then uh, really try to look at the situation from all those different perspectives. Where do I maybe have those qualities that uh, I despise in the other person? Or maybe where do I also have these qualities that I really admire in this other person? And then it becomes more a balanced perspective. And then you really integrate your shadow. And then from that place of wholeness and more completeness, you are much more effective in the world. Because until you make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and you will call it faith. I say it in almost every uh, shadow work video. It's quite funny, actually, but it is true. <laughs> uh, yeah, because uh, it gives you more freedom uh, to choose and to really uh, yeah, set certain things in motion because you are not ruled unconsciously by these uh, little shadow parts that can also sh sabotage you, by the way. Uh, that's uh, like a really important point. It can also sabotage you a lot of addictions they come from unhealed shadow parts that you have to bring up and then look at and then be aware and then shine the light of your awareness and then integrate it with certain practices uh, to really uh, change that energy to really go from maybe a feeling of oh there's a feeling of not being a love there's a feeling of not uh, being enough Okay, how do you really change that to a feeling of feeling enough and feeling empowered and feeling confident and feeling strong? How do you really do that? Uh, yeah, that's the first step is going into it and becoming aware of it and yeah, then shining your light onto that and then consciously choosing more of these emotions and really uh, integrating them in yourself and seeing them also in yourself. Where are you actually strong? Well, you're doing shadow work now, so that actually makes you strong. <laughs> So are you uh, prepared to really uh, yeah, be your authentic self and really be who you are? Well, that's also beautiful. So uh, yeah, play with that, play with that, look at that. And I'll make future videos on really the specifics of how you can go from, let's say, a negative state of being or negative emotions that you maybe uncover while doing this work and then really changing them into positive states and really anchoring them deep into your subconscious mind. So I'll make videos about that also in the future. But uh, for now, play with this and uh, also make sure to check out the other videos. Uh, they might also include uh, yeah, things that help with this and then uh, if you like this video make sure to give it a like that really helps and also uh, there could be some kind of uh, free giveaway that you can get below uh, maybe a shadow work meditation or you can also book a, a coaching call with me uh, that's uh, probably the top link so you can press that and if you really want help with integrating your shadow and taking your shadow work and your personal and spiritual growth to the next level then I'd be more than happy to help with that. And I can help people uh, who are struggling with anxiety, if you're struggling with depression, or just if you're maybe an entrepreneur that really wants to take your business and life to the next level, but you feel like 
something is blocking you, there, there's certain sabotage, or maybe you can't reach the next level, then we can really look at that and what is causing that. And yeah, just other types of coaches. If you're a coach and you really want to go deep into yourself and integrate your shadow, then I can also help with that. So make sure to press that link and then uh, yeah, fill out the form and uh, we can see if we can do some great work together. And besides this, uh, I also have other shadow work videos. So make sure to check them out if you really want to learn more about that. So that's all for this video and have a great day.